Okay, so this video is going to talk about um, rational inequalities. We talked about polynomial inequalities. This is a rational inequality. We have a rational expression, an equality symbol, and the first step is always to make sure that zero is on the right-hand side of this inequality. So this one's already in my proper form, okay? Now, um, I want to talk about discontinuities first. Discontinuities. These are the values that don't go in. Discontinuities. <laughs> These are the values that go, don't go into the domain. These are the values of x that, you know, are not allowed. So as you can see, the denominator here will be zero when x is equal to two. So x is not allowed to be equal to two, right? So one of my discontinuities or values that are not in the domain is two. Um, so um, I want to keep that in mind when I solve this, that x is not allowed to be equal to two. Now, <clears throat> the book I think calls them boundary points or boundary values, whatever, it doesn't really matter. But to determine you know, the boundaries of your interval, that represents the solution to this inequality. You want to not only determine the values where the denominator is zero, but also where the numerator is zero. So my boundary values are two and negative five, right? So the bottom is zero when x is two, and the top is zero when x is negative five. So these are my boundary values, okay? Boundary points, whatever you want to call them. These are the values of x that make either the numerator zero or the denominator zero. Once you find your boundary values, you're going to put them on a number line from least to greatest. And we're going to do the same thing that we did um, with the polynomial inequalities. Now, <clears throat> I want to determine if I'm going to shade these, these in or um, keep an open circle. The reason that this discontinuity is so important is that x can never be 2. So even though it's a boundary, and even if this, this said greater than or equal to, 2 is never going to be included in the interval that represents the solution because x is not allowed to be 2 because that would make the denominator 0. So it's going to be an open circle here. Anything that makes or any discontinuity or anything that makes the denominator 0 is always going to have an open circle. Now, the reason, the way that I determine whether this is going to be open or closed is now to look at the inequality symbol, which says greater than. It doesn't say greater than or equal to. If it said greater than or equal to, then I would shade this in. But because this is just greater than, I want only the situations that make it greater than, the left greater than the right. So this is going to be open as well. Right? So again, always open at the discontinuities and open here the values where the numerator is zero if this is not greater than or equal to. If this has a line underneath, then I would shade that. Now, greater than zero implies positive. So I want to determine all the cases, all the intervals, such that the left-hand side is positive. So let's test points in each of these intervals. So I'm going to test a value to the left of negative 5 and negative 6, in between negative 5 and 2, 0, and then to the right of 2, which is 3. And then I'm going to plug them in here. And I don't care about the numbers that come out of it. I care about the signs. So when I plug negative 6 into the numerator, negative 6 plus 5 is negative. When I plug negative 6 into the denominator, negative 6 minus 2 is negative. And a negative divided by a negative is positive. So this interval, the values here, create positive overall cases. And that's what I want because I want this to be greater than zero or positive. So I'm looking for positive intervals. So this is part of my solution set. Let's see about zero. Plug in zero on the top, I get a positive. Plug in zero on the bottom, I get negative. Positive divided by negative is negative. So this interval is not part of my solution set because I'm looking for greater than zero positive scenarios. As you can see, if I plug in 3, I'm going to get positive over positive. So obviously, this is going to create positive scenarios, and that's part of my solution set, anything positive. And therefore, my solution to this inequality is everything to the left of negative 5, so from negative infinity to negative 5, not including negative 5, parentheses, and from 2 to infinity, not including 2, parentheses. And this is my solution to this rational inequality. So again, you find the discontinuities. And you find all the values that also make the numerator zero, put them on a number line, and then test to make sure that everything you know, satisfies the inequality symbol. But always have zero on the right-hand side first. So look at this rational inequality. This is a rational inequality, but it doesn't have zero on the right. So I have some algebraic manipulation to do first because I want zero here. Always zero on the right. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides, x over x plus 2 minus 2 
It's greater than or equal to zero. Now this is greater than or equal to zero. Now I have two separate fractions here, and that's a problem. I'm gonna make this two over one. We want to combine these fractions, okay? So that I can do the same thing I did here and just compare numerator and denominator to zero. So these have to come together. And the only way I could bring fractions together is to have a common denominator. So the common denominator is x plus two times one. So this is gonna need an x plus two on the bottom. And whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. So I'm multiplying the top and the bottom of this fraction by x plus two. Um, okay, I'll show all my work. x over x plus two minus. So this is going to distribute two x plus four over x plus two. So now they have the same denominator. Let's pull them together. Now, be careful. I'm going to show all my work. Usually I don't show this. x minus the quantity 2x plus 4 all over x plus 2. When I bring these together, I'm subtracting this whole thing. And the reason I showed this step is because I want you to realize that that negative is going to distribute to every term here careful with that. If I'm subtracting a fraction from another fraction, that negative distributes to every term in the numerator, changing all those signs, x minus 2, x minus 4, all over x plus 2. And I usually don't show all these steps, but I want you to realize this. Now I combine like terms, I get negative x minus 4 on top, and x plus 2 on the bottom, greater than or equal to 0. Now let me bring this to the next page, so I have it. Um, because this is where we're at now. Oops. So now I have my rational inequality, um, and it's much larger. Now I have my rational inequality in its proper form such that the right-hand side has zero, and the left-hand side is a single fraction, right? So I went from here, brought the two over, combined, so I had to do some you know, subtraction of rational functions, to create zero on the right and then a single uh, fraction on the left. Um, it just so happens. Now let's talk about the discontinuities. And the only thing that I have here is at the bottom. X can't be negative two this time. And then let's talk about the boundaries. Boundary values, boundary points. The, we have one of them, right? Negative two is what makes the bottom zero. What makes the top zero when X is negative four? So how do I determine that? you know, set the top equal to zero, and then solve. I get x is negative four. So negative two and negative four are my boundary numbers, and I'm gonna put them on a number line from least to greatest. I am always going to do an open circle on the discontinuity. Do I have an open or close on negative four? Let's look at the inequality symbol. It's greater than or equal to, so I'm gonna do closed here. Always open at the discontinuity, closed, if I have the number under the, under the inequality, so greater than or equal to. So this makes it equal to zero. Now I want to determine all the um, intervals that make the left greater than zero, which also is, again, positive. So I'm going to test negative 5, negative 3, and 0. Easy test cases. And again, I don't care about the numbers when I plug it in here. I just care about the signs. So negative 5 plugged in. The opposite of negative 5 is positive 5. Minus 4 is positive. And then negative 5 plus 2 is negative. So this interval is negative. That's not what I want, because I want greater than or equal to 0. I want greater than positive. So let's try negative 3. The opposite of negative 3 is positive 3. Minus 4 is negative. And then negative 3 on the bottom is also going to give me a negative. And the negative divided by negative is positive. So this is a good interval for me. 0 plugged in is going to give me negative on top positive on the bottom, so a negative interval here, which is not what I want. So I only have one solution interval from negative 4 to negative 2, not including negative 2, but including negative 4. This says all the values of x such that um, between negative 4 and negative 2, not including negative 4, but inclu uh, uh, including negative 4, but not including negative 2. And if you're used to this form, you know, this is the same thing. We just use interval notation more often in a higher level math. But they mean the same thing. X is between negative 4 and negative 2, including negative 4 and not including negative 2. So these are rational inequalities.